Hello, it's Good Friday, and I'm just going through my seeds. <coughs> oh, <coughs> okay. um, And Good well. Friday is always a great day to sow some seeds. I have a plan. I always have a plan. But obviously, the plan sometimes you can't resist going through what you've got and remaking the plan. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to go into the polytunnel. I'm going to sow a load of seeds. But before I do anything, I'm also doing a bit of vegetable, vegetable sowing. I have a pocket for my vegetables here. Uh, I've got some peas, not sweet peas, eating peas soaking. And I'm going to pop those in the ground. I swear they'll be eaten by the mice. Um, I'm going through my seed packets, uh, so come along with me and we'll sow some seed. It's a great time to sow. It's Although we had a little frost last night, it wasn't a hefty one and um, the ground is warm. The thing about Easter is it's always, I was talking about this with my friend Saskia, it's something about the moon. <laughs> it's after that very that full moon, there's a full moon and then it's Easter. And what happens with a full moon, I think, this is not a scientific exploration, but it seems to me that you get an April full, April full moon and it's cold, high pressure, cold nights. And then as the moon waxes after the April full moon, seems a really sensible time to sow seed because in my mind, a waxing moon uh, everything's going to pull into the earth. So the seed is going to germinate and send roots down. Not scientific. Don't, don't at me about this. But it just makes sense to me. And I do think sometimes one has a very strong urge to sow seed. And I don't think that's an urge that one should ignore because we have, we've been growing plants from seed for 10,000 years or more. Our instincts are bred into us. We're very, very strongly... So if you have a strong urge to sow seed, don't ignore it. And I have a strong urge to sow seed. It was the full moon, full moon last evening. And it's the Easter weekend. I've got three days before work starts again on Tuesday. Um, so come along with me and I'll show you what I'm sowing. I'm showing, I'll show you what I'm doing with what I've got. And uh, we'll have a little seed sowing. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks I give you along the way are useful, you can always buy me a coffee or better still, join my YouTube club. The links to coffee buying and club membership are in the blurb to all my clips. Right, come on, let's go. And the first thing you need to do is make sure, once you've decided what you're going to sow, that you've got enough seed trays to sow into them. And I've just counted this little selection. And I have 27 packets of seeds and I know I do not have 27 seed trays. So I'm going to rationalise and some of these will go into half trays. So half a tray of one thing and half a tray of another. And some of them will just have to wait. Some of them I will discover I've doubled up. But I'm going to be organised before I go out into the tunnel. I'm going to be very organised because otherwise I'll get myself in a, in a mess. Edited. I now have 17. <laughs> That's better. You can't do too much. Don't give yourself too much to do. Or you won't achieve your objective and you'll just get yourself in a flap and make a big mess and not get anywhere. Right. Next thing is to put a plaster or my, my hands. It's that time of year where I'm endlessly ripping my hands apart. So I'm going to put plasters everywhere so that I don't get mud in the holes. I've got some direct sewing to do this afternoon and uh, this is my go to tool when I'm direct sewing. This is basically my go-to tool. <laughs> I can hoe off the weeds, I can make a drill, I can pull the earth back over whatever I've sewn. This is, this, a good hoe is a very valuable thing. Obviously you know this, but just in case you didn't. Right, so here I am in my, one of my cut flower patches and this is quite a wide bed. It's been covered in a compost heap for some years. So the soil is really rich and delicious. And I'm gonna put a couple of rows of peas here. I'm gonna direct sow 
a few bits of veg, some salad, uh, some beetroot. It's warm. I can feel the earth radiating heat from the back of my hand. It's like you can feel the radiator. So it's perfect time to be sowing. You don't want to touch the soil. I mean, you can touch the soil and it'll feel warm. It's the sun's out, of course it's gonna feel warm. It absorbs the heat. Even I have that much basic physics. What you want to do is feel the radiation of the heat when your hand is an inch above the soil. They used to say that you had to take your trousers down and squat <laughs> Yeep. Uh, to feel the heat of the earth. I'm not going to do that. I can just do it with the back of my hand. Anyway, I have hoed the bed over and I'm just making two shallow drills across and I'm going to put my netting up later. I've got lots of netting to put up. So, um, but I can put my, put my peas in like this. And these are just delicious garden peas. I've soaked the seed for 20 minutes just to start breaking up the hard carapace. And I'm gonna sow them quite thickly, partly because the mice will have some of them and uh, partly because we'll eat the pea top tips as saladings and partly because some of them will then be allowed to grow on up. So I'm gonna sow pretty much the whole lot. Um, you could be much more organized, but I'm gonna put two or three in together at about five or six inch pacings. You see, it's annoying that this bed is wide because I'm treading on it in order to sow the seed. Rubbish. And the seed is going in about a good, a good inch deep because it's big seed and needs room to, to break open and germinate, send a root up, a shoot up and a root down. If I have it too shallowly, it'll break back into the soil and dry out. Anyway, that's my first one I'm going to do. And because I'm thinking on my feet, I don't grow veg much. I'm much more organized when it comes to growing flowers. Actually, what I've done is I'm gonna have this row is going to be for growing up. And this one is going to be for pea shoots and saladings. So I'm really doing, sowing this, this row quite thickly. And I can use my hoe to cover the seed up again. And I just have to remember to come and put a net for this one. But that's all right, I've got sweet peas over there that need netting, so that's a job for tomorrow. Next up, spring onions. And annoyingly, because the bed is so wide, I'm having to leave more space between the rows so I can get between things, waste. And then this is an Italian salad leaf mixture. I'm not gonna sew the whole packet because I'll successionally so I might do some more in May or early June to take us through the summer. Yeah, it is. Isn't it a lovely day? Tea cake. You like this weather, don't you? Yeah. What would I do without her? She's my faithful friend. It doesn't matter how much rain you've had or how damp the soil, if you're direct sowing, you must water in the seeds because what you're doing is partly 
kind of gluing the soil to the seeds. You're, you're wetting them together and that will help when it comes to germinating. If you're a seed and you germinate into an air pocket, then you're quite likely <laughs> to dry off. Whereas if you dry, if you germinate into a, a nice clod of damp soil, then you've got a good chance of, of finding tenure, if you like, and growing on. It doesn't matter what you're sowing. You can be sowing any kind of seed, vegetables, flowers, anything. Right, quarter to three on Good Friday. I better go and wash my hands and go to church. I can see people walking along the road already. <laughs> okay, here we go. Right, Saturday afternoon, the most glorious weekend. Uh, so I finished direct sowing those veg and then I carried on and I've direct sown because the soil feels nice and warm and feels to me as though the moon is going to encourage uh, germination and roots going down. I'm not generally a brilliant, I'm not generally an sort of enormously keen direct sower, but from time to time, if the mood takes you to do something, do it. Because, you know, your mood is important. You don't ignore your instincts. Anyway, so I've direct sown Ami Magus, five rows each of Ami Magus, um, a lovely black poppy called Black Swan, uh, which I don't really grow for the flowers, I grow for the seed heads. Um, uh, Cineglossum amabile, that's Chinese forget-me-not to you and me, blue, uh, and a bit more um, Gypsophila Covent Garden, which is a lovely soft one, which is very useful for weddings. Not a cash cow, <laughs> but I love it. So it's fun to grow a little bit. Don't grow, I haven't, I've only grown two rows, sown two rows of that. I'm now pricking out absolutely minute... Um, Nicotiana sensation seedlings and I'm going to put all my prickings out onto the harding, hardening off benches because it's now having been freezing for the last couple of nights full moon um, it's going to be slightly warmer so it's going to be like six degrees tonight so that's fine they can harden off quietly hopefully get some fresh air I don't think seedlings love being undercover once the weather warms up, it gets very hot during the day, hard to regulate the temperature. So if they're going to live outside, I start hardening them off really quite early. Um, and also that gives me room then to start germinating. So I'm going to be sowing, not mammoth dill. I've changed my mind about that one. I am a little early, but I'm just going to do it. A little cosmos purity and a little cosmos fizzy rose. Um, I that we had a frost and I lost my morning glory seedlings so I'm going to sow a few more of those I did put them in a bit early these are not a cash crop either these are for going around the back door and cheering me up every morning I'm going to sow a little more because I love it so much uh, Leonora Sibiricus honeyweed Ageratum very useful filler not worth much, but I like it. This variety is called Dondo White. Uh, Mexican paintbrush is its other name. I'm fond of it. I'm going to sow some Monada. Get that going. I love it as a as a foliage later in the summer. I'm going to get a tray of Statis going. I'll definitely sow some more later. Lime green Nicotiana for later on in the summer. And then I got some Tagetes burning embers which i'm told is very good i think one of you told me it's very good for cutting um, but i'm also growing it because i've got some tomatoes and i'm going to have some uh for the first time in years i'm growing veg um so they're going to grow around my tomatoes and my um cucumbers and so on to keep the white fly off it's called companion planting i'm not an expert in the field and then I'm going to do a little bit more helichrysum, uh, bright rose and purple. And then a, a mix of scabious. And I don't grow huge amounts of annual scabious, but a little bit. They're useful for buttonholes and flower crowns and things, but again, not really a cash crop. 
And then I'm going to do two a tray of Rebecca Irish Eyes and Marmalade. I can be a little bit careful. Last year I did not cut a single stem of Rebecca. So while I love it and I love the yellow and the bronze colours in the garden, I'm not sure it's really, again, not really a cash cow. And why I've brought up the Nicandra Fissiloides, which is very tender. I'm not sowing that. So that's what I'm sowing. But I've got to get pricked out first. And I'm in a hurry because I then have to fetch a child <laughs> from a play date. Take another child to the gym because they're very fit. Uh, and lay the table for Easter lunch tomorrow. Because the good hymns, such good hymns for Easter. I've been listening to the St Matthew Passion all day. It's on um, iPlayer. If It was on Radio 3 a week ago. And you can catch it on iPlayer for ages. Um, so um, that's my that's my listening to today. Right, onwards and upwards. I better get on. This is my very very basic hardening off place, and you can see even when things are really tiny, I'll pop them out here just to have some real weather. So I wonder what you're sowing this weekend. Pop a pop a comment in the in the comments. Might be helpful for somebody else in your zone we're kind of nine i think eight nine <laughs> you know i don't love the zoning system anyway uh look the narcissi are lovely um yeah what are you sowing this weekend did you plant your potatoes as is traditional for good friday yesterday um and i suddenly realized of course <laughs> you go you know what i'm a very very slow processor 56 years old and of course, if Easter is the first Sunday after the full moon, and after the full moon feels like rooting weather, then that's why you would plant your potatoes, because it's root vegetables. Is that right? What do you think? Let's have some comments. Tell me what you think. Anyway, thanks very much for coming along. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you have a lovely, lovely weekend wherever you are, even if you're still under feet of snow. Uh, even if Easter is irrelevant and you are not interested uh, or whatever your situation, have a lovely weekend and I'll see you very soon.